What's up everybody, Kier Gomes here and welcome back. Today's gonna be an interesting one, a real slapper for you guys. I'm actually really excited. Over the last few weeks, I've been helping Alex edit some stuff for the Alex Pandaria Magic course. If you guys haven't heard about that, check it out. It's a really interesting course. There is so much robust detail in there, but it also kind of rekindled this love, this passion inside of me for uh, the legend of S.W. Erdnase. If you're subscribed to this channel, the odds are you probably know who S.W. Erdnase is, but in case you don't, you might be familiar with his work, the groundbreaking book, Expert at the Card Table, published in 1902. The book is widely accepted as the sleight of hand Bible and is something that most most magicians would credit at least some of their skills to. The book, of course, is popular for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, the content within. It was discussing expert level magic secrets. Things like that weren't very common in the 1900s and especially with playing cards. But the other thing was that it was released anonymously under the alias S.W. Erdnase. So people knew the book, but nobody knew who the author was. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at everything that we know about S.W. Erdnase and the book that precedes him to see if we can figure out the ultimate question who the f is SW Ordinaise? Let's go. Okay, so we have an anonymous author and we have this insanely groundbreaking book, unlike anything that anybody had ever seen before at the time. Now, of course, the obvious first deduction that we can make is that these were magic secrets. This was, in most cases, people's livelihood, but in some cases, nefarious. This book sort of uh, alluded to using these skills and these slides to cheat at cards. Given that in the 1900s, playing cards were far more associated with things like poker and card games than they were with things like magic or deception, it's pretty safe to say that the expert at the card table was written by a magician, somebody who had expert level sleight of hand skills. The interesting thing was he wrote the book from the perspective of a card cheat. This is a really interesting fact and it tells us two things about Erdnase. Number one, he probably wanted to stay anonymous for the sake of his own protection. It does make sense. I mean, if you're publishing these secrets, you're not only affecting the livelihood of some magicians, you're affecting the livelihood of most poker cheats. I also think it makes sense to want to stay anonymous because back in these days, punishments for things like poker cheating were a lot more severe and a lot less controlled. But the second thing that it tells us that we can pretty much bank on knowing for sure is that S.W. Erdnase had some kind of background in magic or deception. Given that Erdnase would be over a hundred years old at this point, it's safe to say that he is gone and we'll never know exactly who he was. But the name, S.W. Erdnase, that, that might be all the hint that we need. Here's what I mean. It has been speculated very widely, this is a pretty common thing, uh, that the name S.W. Erdnase is just a scrambled variation of somebody else's name and possibly the true author of the book. Now there's all kinds of theories out there for who it might be and after kind of de-scrambling the name or trying different things, there are a few people that kind of match the time period and maybe the motivation of an S.W. Erdnase. The first one being Milton Franklin Andrews. Milton Franklin Andrews was a known card hunter hustler and con man back in the day, and during this time period, this is definitely something that would be in line with what he was known for. Plenty of theories have been out there about how Andrews could be re-scrambled to be S.W. Erdnase. It does kind of make sense, but of course, Andrews has denied all of these claims up until he died at 33. Next one is E.S. Andrews. Now, I think at this point, it's safe to say if your last name was Andrews and you were alive during the 18 to 1900s, uh, you were probably gonna be accused of being S.W. Erdnase. However, E.S. Andrews has even more of a suspicious motivation for this. When he was at his peak of con manistry, he was another card hustler, card cheat, con man. While he was at his peak, at large, that's when the book started circulating in the United States. Now, it is very safe to assume that if he's a traveling man, the book is traveling with him. Now, what pushes this theory even further is that some of the arrest records for E.S. Andrews actually seem to support the locations that the book was circulating, which according to the arrest records would put him in the exact same location as S.W. Erdnase. If you're still not convinced on that one, E.S. Andrews spelled backwards literally is S.W. Erdnase. There was other Andrews, like James Andrews, who was another card hustler. There was James DeWitt Andrews, who was also a card shark, but also known for sleight of hand and deception. Herbert Lee Andrews, and Robert Foster were also among those who were accused of being the anonymous author. So taking what we know, and that's that the book started circulating in 1902, there are plenty of examples of con artists and card sharks that were kind of around the happenings of this book during that time. I gotta say, if I had to go with one theory, it seems too easy, but E.S. Andrews would be my best guess. But that is the mystery of the expert at the card table and the legend of S.W. Erdnase distilled into what hopefully isn't terribly long of a video. But if you're still watching, I do want to 
say thank you so much, and it's time to hear about today's sponsor, Doc's Playing Cards. On September 15th, the new SW Erdnays Playing Cards will be available to backers on Kickstarter from Doc's Playing Cards. This deck pays an homage to the legendary anonymous author and of course the lessons and teachings within the book. Now the most important thing that I can call out about SW Erdnays is the association with the color green. If you're not making a green Erdnays deck, you better have a pretty damn good reason why. This deck features a beautiful green matte tuck box with some gold foil accents and the back design is made up of similar tones to make that theme nice and Erdnaysy all throughout it. Big shout out to Doc's Playing Cards for sponsoring today's episode. And if you guys are interested, check out the Kickstarter on September 15th. Actually, you'd be really supporting me by doing that too because I filmed all the trailers for, for this project, so. Check it out. Well guys, that is all the time that I have for today, but I do have some other videos up. I have some, some videos planned, but if you guys like these type of educational or theory videos, definitely let me know. I kind of enjoyed it. It was a little bit different, a lot of fun, and I got to talk a lot, so uh, this was probably the most fun to make. <laughs> all right, make sure you guys like and subscribe and make sure you tell your friends if they're interested in this kind of virgin activity over here. I'm having a lot of fun, okay? You guys can also follow me on Instagram if you wanna know what I'm up to, just kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll leave all that information down below. I think that's everything I got for now. I think that's everything. Oh, if you guys are interested uh, in picking up or supporting me even further, uh, we do have a new Kickstarter launching with one of my favorite magicians of all time, Jay Sankey. We're doing a deck together. I'm super stoked on it. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you already know about it. Uh, so make sure you uh, buy that. <laughs>